Did you meet her bio? Do you know this wonderful spirit, beautiful lady is also a doctor? Yes. She's an anesthesiologist. And she came to America not too long ago. Would you please chill it, tell your story and share with us in your words? So, um, my story is a story of choice. A story of choice and a story of love. Love of myself. So, uh, I was born in Cameroon, uh, Africa. And um, I became a doctor there. However, Cameroon is very, very patriarchal. It means, you know, um, as a woman, you kind of have to marry a man, have children, and be done. Which, in itself, is okay. <laughs> as you get married, you're done. <laughs> you're done. So, um, so I rebelled against that and uh, went into medical school, uh, graduated really early at 23, and um, yeah, just like Denisha, I was also. And every day of my life as a doctor in Cameroon, I had to justify why I was a doctor and I had to fight to have patients. Like my patients would come and be, I want to see the doctor, and I would be like, Yeah, it's me. And they would be like, No, the real doctor. <laughs> and I would say, Well, it's me. How could it be a woman every day for like two years? And after that, it was like I, ha I can't spend my life proving myself every day after. Having already done that by going to medical school, by choosing that. So I came to America and. Um, yes. And how they say you want change, be the change. You start um, once we make the change within ourselves and it creates this boomerang of change around us. And believe it or not, we only get to attract the ones that are good for us and benefit and enhance who we want to be, our journey, the next level, instead of the ones that we cringe or get suppressed around. And don't be surprised that your ch uh, friends also change. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> that's true. And that's okay. Yes. Right. And sometimes that's the pain we have to release in order to get to the power part. When we do the healing from the heart, uh, there is a Dr. She who is practicing Chinese Qigong master and everything, and he says the power to most healing is an open heart and love. Because we can't have joy and love and feel pain, right? And Pain gets numbed down when there's open heart. Would you grace us, all of us, if you would like to, for us to do a beautiful heart-centered um, visualization or an exercise? Would that be okay? <laughs> yeah? All right, before we do, is there any, would you accept any questions? I would love to accept questions, but yeah. I want to say, yes. because we have, um, I want everybody to realize that we all process information different ways. Some people are visual, some people are auditory, some people feel things, and some people want to understand. For those who want to understand, the heart has the biggest electromagnetic field of your body. Like, this is science. It's a hundred times bigger than the brains. It's actually like five, like five feet. So the brain's electromagnetic field is smaller than the heart. So it's very powerful. And the heart gives commands to the brain. The brain doesn't give commands to the heart. The brain could talk to the heart, but it doesn't give commands. 
and it has all been proven scientifically. So we're gonna do this, but like there's a science above the roof. <laughs> so is that why we get to gravitate and like someone without even thinking about it? And it's beyond chemistry? Yeah. Okay. I have one question. Yes, ma'am. As an anesthesiologist, I've had clients who are anesthesiologists, and there is a lot of pressure. And the pressure is that the person laying there, you're in total control of their life. <coughs> a millisecond is here and gone. How do you cope with that pressure day in, day out, and stabilize not only yourself, but bless Hmm. Beautiful question. Um, yes, everything we use in anesthesia is potentially lethal. So, um, number one, we have good trainings. I have good training <laughs> 12 years. Um, however, the pressure is what um, makes a good anesthesiologist or not. You notice when they come, they don't look at you, they don't talk to you, they that is somebody who's under pressure. Um, I have an extensive personal spiritual practice and I don't even get out of my bed before I have like, meditated and you know done a lot of things, don't look at my phone. When I get to my patients, I always, always offer them the option to meditate as they fall asleep. Mm -hmm. I guide them. I mean, it's a few seconds, but it matters. Um, and I know that I was born to do this. So I trust, I trust my training, I trust my intentions, I trust my creativity with my patience. It's, it's really beautiful. It's, um, I'm really blessed. I want everybody to realize that we all process information different ways. Some people are visual, some people are auditory, some people feel things, and some people want to understand. For those who want to understand, the heart has the biggest electromagnetic field of your body. Like, this is science. It's a hundred times bigger than the brains. It's actually like five, like five feet. So the brain's electromagnetic field is smaller than the heart. So it's very powerful. And the heart gives commands to the brain. The brain doesn't give commands to the heart. The brain could talk to the heart, but it doesn't give commands and it has all been proven scientifically. So we're gonna do this, but like there's a science above the roof. <laughs> so is that why we get to gravitate and like someone without even thinking about it? And it's beyond chemistry? Yeah. Okay. Education is such a big deal, a big investment that Americans make for their children. I have children about to go to college, and I know we have some young people here. But listening to you and to the other speakers, the formal education seems to be just a part of what makes you, but we as parents put so much investment in formal education, conventional schooling. What can we do as parents, as, as mothers, to, to bring that education? How can we bring that to our children sooner than later? Wow, that is, I actually get goosebumps um, because this is the most important question that many people can ask today because we all know our education system is really crumbling, the conventional education system. And I want to tell you a story. Um, as a child, I was told I should never do anything artistic. I should, because I used to draw outside the lines, and, and I was told, how dumb can you be? You can't even, like, you know, like draw inside this thing, box, circle. So my whole life, I, I never touch anything artistic. 
and and I knew I didn't have any creativity. I mean, that is that is a wound. That is a wound to the fundamental essence of who I am. And and finally, in 2015, I have a friend who is an artist. She was doing a painting meditation challenge. And I love meditation, like you know, so I joined the challenge. However, she noticed that I wasn't posting anything. And she said, Marie, you're not posting anything. And I said, you know I can't even draw a stick figure. Like, why would you want me to post anything? Everybody will laugh. And finally one day, because she didn't have many people join, so of course, she kept coming at me. And she said, who even needs to draw when they can paint? And it was like my whole being, it was like a cosmic boom. And I was like, oh my God. And she guided me, I did my first painting, and I painted for 24 hours straight, non-stop. I have tears in my eyes. And and it was like everything that had been pent up because of, you know many teachers had said you always paint outside the lines like no. and now I realize it's because I wanted to paint what I wanted to paint and that's the wound that came from a conventional education system I'm a painter like people buy my painting so that's the first thing and the second thing is you have to connect to your child, to your children. Because parents, unfortunately we're busy in 2018. So we put all our hope, our everything on the school that, you know, the school will take care of that. But that's not what it is about. Connect to your children. That's what will empower them to make the choices they need to make to get what they need. Either from the conventional educational system or to start attracting the conditions, the people, the situations that will give them what they need to become what they need to become. But we as parents need to do that. Because we all know our kids, oh, you like to wear dresses that are, you know, whatever, like, you like to count. Like, our children tell us who they are. So we need to connect to them. We need to empower them. And that way they will know that it's okay to choose. Because if we don't empower them, then they do what they think we want them to do. Make sense? So that's that's what I would say. And and trust. Because when you empower them, you can trust them. And when they trust themselves, you know, like all the big ones, Bill Gates, you know, Steve Jobs, like they didn't really you know, they follow something inside of them, and we all have that.